Hey, I'm Ken, and this video is part 7 of my Introduction to FlowLab series. Anyone can sign up for free at flowlab.io and follow along in their web browser. In this video, we'll create some collectible items and add some sound effects to our game. To start with, click to create a new object to collect. In this game, I want to add some collectible stars, so I'll name the object type accordingly and then choose a sprite. I'll also tweak the physics settings a bit. Unchecking the Is Solid checkbox means the player won't slow down or bounce off the stars when she hits them. We will want to check the Enable Collisions box though so that we can trigger some logic when the player touches the stars. Now we can clone the star to add some more of them to our level. Collectible items like this can be used to guide the player through the game world and provide small rewards for taking an otherwise tricky or dangerous route. OK, now to make the objects collectible, we'll break the problem down into two parts. First, we want the stars to disappear when the player object touches them. Secondly, we want to keep track of how many stars the player has collected. To make the stars disappear when touched, we edit a star and open its behaviors window. For a trigger, we'll select Collision and choose Player as the object type. Now this trigger will activate whenever the player object collides with this one. To make the object disappear, we'll select the Destroyer from Components and connect the collision's hit output to the destroyer's destroy input. Now whenever we touch a star, it should disappear. Let's quickly test to verify that it works. Next, we just need to count them up and display a running total, which will be very similar to the health counter in the previous video. Again, we'll start with a collision trigger and set it to activate when touching a star. Then we'll add a number to store the total and give that a suitable label. The collision trigger will get connected to the number's increment input. Now we'll add a label to display the total to the player. Now we just need to add a label to let the player know that this is the coin count. Adding some sound effects will make the game more interesting to interact with, so let's do that next. The sound block can be found in the components section. We'll add a sound and connect its play input to the star collision trigger. Now this sound will play whenever we touch a star. Clicking the sound block will open up its settings where we can select which sound to play. Clicking on a sound previews it. It would also be helpful to play a warning sound when the player object loses health, so let's connect the sound to the spikes collision trigger as well. Okay, now we just need to play test and make adjustments if needed. In part 8, we'll create a switch using messages and add another level to our game. Thanks for watching. 